Hey, this is the Nate Jamar Rick Club. And believe it or not, whether you like it or don't like it, learn to love it. Because you have to listen to Wrestling Is Real. It is the best thing going today. Woo! The worldwide leader of podcasting excellence. The king of podcasts radio network proudly presents The Wrestling Is Real Podcast. Because wrestling needs us. This is episode 833 of the Wrestling Is Real Podcast. And this is King of Podcasts here with you. We're only, what, another four weeks away from WrestleMania season. We have new things into the mix. Gunther now is going to find himself an opponent for the Intercontinental title. Next week on Raw, six opponents. Why they want to do it in a gauntlet just to go and cover one night. Doesn't say much for me. I wish they actually covered it over a little bit more time. But, I mean, they didn't put on a pay-per-view. Fine. You want to do it over one episode of Raw? Not necessarily caring. It feels kind of cheap. The fact that the IC title is going to be put that way. But nevertheless, that storyline, Dakota Kai, you know, turning on Bailey and basically damage control is completely no longer any remnants of damage control is even part of Bailey's purview. Okay, fine. So all that's done. Nia Jack's getting involved while Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley want to be able to go ahead and face each other eventually. Right? All these other matches. Oh, Cody and Drew. Yeah. All this other stuff pales in comparison to the bloodline. All you had to do was just put the rock as part of the bloodline. You did that three weeks ago. And now the rock and Roman reigns. Damn. Just give those guys some time. They gave them lots of time this week. They gave him lots of time this week. And how did it turn out? Well, another master class. I don't remember the last time I ever decided I'm going to go back and look at the ratings now and just, no, not the ratings, excuse me. I'm going to get to the ratings in a second. But I hadn't even thought about since CM Punk and MJF's promos back and forth leading up to their ultimate title match or, or few that they had. Okay. That's the last time I really did pay attention to what's going on with everything that's going on with promos that I would go back and watch them again. Smackdown WrestleNomics reports, most recent episode, 2.348 million viewers at a pretty good, 18 to 49 rating 3% increase. And right now at the moment, the WWE is averaging 5% overall, more viewership, 10% more 18 to 49 in this quarter compared to last year. So that's the, that's the peak for them. They're going to get now let's put this in as well. So eight thirty to eight forty five, rock and Roman reigns on TV. And you had almost 2.75 million viewers, the biggest number there was of all, right? For the night. People stayed around and watched that whole segment. And then the main event, you have Orton, Austin Theory, Kevin Owens featured. Ratings drop. Yep. Most viewed clip on YouTube is. Rock and Reigns responding to Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Over 2 million views. Oh, the LWO return of Carlito returning with Rey Mysterio to go up against Santos Escobar now and his new click. 650,000 viewers. That's it. This is, as of, of, this is as of yesterday. Okay, as I'm recording this. Yeah. There's a learning curve here to be put for this audience. Because it was one thing last year where, you know, you had Sami Zayn being a part of the whole storyline with the bloodline, but this is just another level. The rock being included here. It's not just because he's there. That's the most important thing we need to make a point here. You can say all you want about, you know, the pie eating, you know, People's champion, all the shit he did from Nation of Domination to Hollywood Rock to everything. To his work against John Cena, 
and his back and forth with him, his back and forth with CM Punk. Okay. 2013. Let me tell you something. This is the best rock promos we're getting of all time. This is, this is the stuff of legends. The rock is channeling his damn inner Ric Flair persona. Do you understand? This is so egotistical. He's being such a prick. He's being such an asshole and it is great. It is lively, entertaining and compelling heel promos coming off of here. And I mean, Roman Reigns has been great, but damn rock is coming in full a game. Like this is to make up for the fact that, you know, listen, he's doing a tag team match and they announced the rock and Roman Reigns now in a tag team match against Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins night one of WrestleMania. I, are, we, are we finally going to finalize that match? We're going to get that up. We can still got to find out what, you know, did Cody and Seth say yes to it? I don't know if they did, but nevertheless, incredible work on SmackDown. Like it is, you have to watch the segments with those two, the bloodline segment. You have to absolutely watch again. It's become that good. And tell you what, it's impressive, quite impressive. And at the moment, you know, even, even the fact that they talk about with rock. Yeah. Every show selling out, but they've been doing that pretty well. Anyway, they haven't been hurting at all in terms of live events. They've been doing really well, continuing to sell out. And I'm telling you the rock coming back when he did was such a great move for them. Such a great move for them. Let me just tell you like this. Again, we're just going to make the point here. Let's put the evidence out there in front. So Raw, you know, they only had a couple hundred tickets left right before they're set up for Raw Monday night in San Antonio, Texas, but they pretty much took care of it. SmackDown, the same thing. Monday Night Raw hit their fifth consecutive TV sellout, four straight sellout on Friday night. They did it. Incredible, incredible, but they're doing massive work right now. So Cody and Seth, they're going to give their announcement as to what they're going to do about this tag team challenge. They're going to do it on, on Friday night. So we didn't get it on Monday night. Obviously Monday night, the inferior show is raw, even though you got Michael Cole and Pat McAfee there, but as long as Roman and Rock are on Fox, SmackDown's the A show. Just is. Just feels like that. So now let's go and look at all this. When we look at everything now, two nights you made event WrestleMania. Now, of course, they've already sold out the show. Doesn't make a difference anyway. But it's the way. It's just what the rock has been able to go and do out there. And it's not as if Roman Reigns can't go ahead and cut in here. Listen, what I think they did in the storyline after the rock went ahead and went on tirade on Seth and Cody. All right. To make sure Roman Reigns was important. Let me tell you something. Roman feels a little bit inferior right now because he couldn't get the crowd to acknowledge him, but that's the heel thing. But then he had to go and put the rock on the spot. That was the extra touch right there. That was bliss. That was wonderful. Regardless of the rocks promo, you could have just left it alone. But the fact that Roman Reigns asserted his authority and made sure, first of all, the rock joined the bloodline. And then the rock this time around publicly acknowledged the tribal chief. Excellent. And regardless, Rock will turn or whatever will happen. The Rock is going to get turned on or the other way around. The Rock and Roman Reigns will happen. But the slow burn on those two is a wonderful idea. So we get the Rock appearing at WrestleMania. And we can wait until next year and see Rock and Roman Reigns. A feud culminating out of those two. Ooh, that sounds good. Ooh, that does sound good. So I'm sure you've already heard the promos, but I'm going to go and break down some more on this. And I know others have done the same thing. Masterclass here. But it is something to be said. My point is, 
there is not one WWE storyline right now, not one that could even come close. And it doesn't matter if you gave more time to them. It doesn't matter who else you have. You need to create well-rounded superstars. And as I said before, with Rock and Roman Reigns, they took their lumps, okay? They took shitty gimmicks and they were resilient. They were patient. When they got pushed, they got pushed badly and it didn't work out. But then when they got a chance to go back at it again, both resilient and things turned around for both of them. They're the two biggest stars in wrestling right now. Hands down. No other company can come close to what the Rock and Roman Reigns have right now. Period. End of discussion. Let's get back over here then, though. What it comes down to. What is it that these other stars can't be doing? Now, you have to think about it like this. There's a part about where Vince was out there, you know, and obviously he had his influence of who was going to be pushed, you know, to the top. And obviously Rock got a lot of that corporate champion, this and that. And, you know, the booking ability, Vince had to go and give the blessing on these stars to be able to become the champions and the big main eventers that they are. And it took time for them to get there. And one of the most important things too, is that there is something to be said about these stars that we've talked about many times on this program. When they're so good and they're set up for wrestling, they're so good up, so good and what they do on the wrestling side that Hollywood calls for them and Hollywood call for the rock. Hey, has he had the most, you know, fulfilling career in terms of like, you know, Oscar credit or uh, you know, Oscar credentials or anything like that? No. Has he done the best job of beginning you know, getting him with a franchise he can really work with? Eh, not really. But no matter what, he is a box office attraction. And he's worked a lot of movies. And he is a big deal. One of the biggest things there is in entertainment anyway. People know him as the big box office star. A lot of money but behind his movies. No matter what. And towards the latter part of 10 years plus... 20 years plus actually on this career in movies. As I said, the rock understood his return here that he needed to go ahead and make sure that people really resonate with him. Again, his base audience, the wrestling fans, he wanted them to get behind his back again and really give a shit because Unlike the performances he might have done in other movies, say the Jumanji's of the world or, you know, San Andreas or Rampage or Fast Fear, any of the Fast X movies, Fast and Furious movies, Hobbs and Shaw, right? Jungle Queen, you know, no matter what, this is the bread and butter. He's come back into this space. It was a time that it was needed. It helped the WWE because they did get the Netflix deal. And all the other broadcast deals happened while he was still in the mix. Okay. So that was set up. And then the rock comes in and he's just not mailing it in. This is not mailing it in. This is the best work he's ever done. I mean, forget about what he's going to do in the ring. We're not looking at him putting out some five-star performance in a month. That's not happening. He's going to come out here. He's going to talk. Okay. He has five moves of doing just like John Cena, but you know what? The promo ability overshadows. And this right here, I honestly feel like this rock that we're getting right now is about as close to the real deal as we get the overinflated ego, the big, you know, multi-million dollar box office star. That's this guy successful entrepreneur. Hey, he's found success 
as a result of the money he's made off of movies that he has done him and his wife hey bought the xfl created the ufl seven bucks productions produced other shows did the show ballers been producing other shows okay he's got an empire maybe his acting wasn't the best in the world but you know what that money's been used for good work he's been able to get some real business done his own products you know endorsements whatever you can't knock the guy. Listen, he is of the same cloth that was Sylvester Stallone was, where Arnold Schwarzenegger was, all of them. And to think that he's done all this right now, does he have to come back to the WWE? No. But he's here. And we are really enjoying, at least I am definitely enjoying, what he is delivering for us. This is the best rock promo, the best rock promos we've ever had. Like, I will never say, I can look and remember all the stuff he did before. But this right here, I can go back and watch the rock doing what he does here. And everything down to the fact of that we have a purpose for what he's doing. Because he's answering the challenge by Cody Rhodes for a singles match. And in essence, the Rock doubles down, turns it back on him, and then decides, well, here's your counteroffer with stipulations. Well explained, well clarified. And the implications are concerning the main event, the world title match at WrestleMania Night 2. That's great. Everything we would want, again, there, everything had attention to detail. The minutes being used fit a purpose. And the crowd eating up the heel heat, eating it up. There is a probably with real hatred in there. But, but it's, I mean, I can't say much better about it. We have to play this back. We have to go ahead and play back what The Rock said and how well this turned out. And then we're going to go and listen to what Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins said and how much difference there is. Because it was a big difference. And it wasn't good. It wasn't, it was, it was fine. But yeah, we're going to talk about Diarrhea Dwayne. That is like a throwback to what Vince would say. It would be a bad creative idea. See, the creative team that's still there, I'm sure there's some people over there that will still think, Oh, Vince is still involved. We still have to pitch things. We still have to create ideas that Vince will like because they've been trained. They've been programmed. Okay. They've been indoctrinated to do the Vince way, especially at WrestleMania. So this is a learning curve for the creative team, a learning curve for the stat, for the team, the talent. If you want to be able to go and sustain the level of WrestleMania glory that we have right now, if you want to make the next WrestleMania an after one and the next one after that, you want to keep them up to be the best possible. Make that Netflix deal go 10 years and plus more than that. And can see the legacy that TKO group holdings wants. You have to create an environment that creates a commitment to excellence. Vince might not have created excellence, but there were plenty of glimpses of excellence in what he's done in this company. Triple H has to learn that bigger lesson. And the rest of his team has to figure that out. Because Triple H still has this thinking of like, well, hey, I'm still running full sale NXT. Small scale thinking. The bigger picture is something I'm sure he's had trouble wrapping his head around. Like, think about this. To go ahead and pull these shows off and like, okay, some people will even kind of when, you know, they, you know, Saudi Arabia is going to get saw crowds because of how they're set up over there. They can go to Jeddah or wherever they want and they'll set off. But then some people were kind of like, oh my goodness, Opta Stadium in Perth, Australia. 40,000 people is a good crowd. But remember cricket matches and all sea rules football and rugby and all that? They pull 80,000 plus in that stadium. You could have gotten a bigger crowd because 
they did have to, they had to go and tear off some of the upper upper deck. You could have sold that part, but you didn't. That tells you something too. You know, they got a good crowd. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if they would have put it in Sydney or Melbourne, maybe it would have been a different story. I don't know. As opposed to Western Australia, but nevertheless, people did kind of like look and say that early part of the night when you could still see the lights out there, uh, there was just some empty spots. Hey, you know what? I'm not here to go ahead and start bitching and moaning and complaining about it and start being extra critical, but I just think that, you know what? What a nice problem to have that, you know what? We can't just go ahead and paper off the top row. We got to, we got to fill the rest of those seats. Cause they're not having to do with that with Lincoln financial fuel. I'm sure of that. I'm sure when they go to Paris or Germany, they're not going to have that problem because they're also not running big. Ma- oh, like I think what well, Paris is a major stadium. Germany is a, an arena, I believe. So think about that. I mean, there's a few things to be considered. But what you need in terms of the talent, in terms of the storylines, of all that, you need what the Rock and Roman Reigns are delivering right now. Like everything should be at this level. Everything in, in WWE should be at this level. Or, or, or trying to achieve this level. And I don't know if anybody can do that right now. I mean, this is another level right now because of The Rock being incorporated into the bloodline. Now, I don't know how much Paul Heyman gets to be about this. By the way, Paul Heyman going to the Hall of Fame. We'll talk about that a little bit. A very well-deserved induction to the Hall of Fame. And I think some of the people have said this. I think Lance Storm actually said it on Twitter. Yeah, let's just leave Paul out there by himself. Let him cut the hour-long you know, induction speech. Let him be the sole inductee. Ooh, that would look good. And do I care if Brock Lesnar is the one that's going to induct him? No, not necessarily. I'm sure there are plenty of other people that could be putting him in. I mean, dare I say, he doesn't have to be the only person that's going to try to induct him in, but I think, I'm pretty sure Tommy Dreamer would probably have a good say to go and be a part of that. You know, I don't know if he's got his way to pull himself away from the TNA creative to go and do that, but I would say so. There could be others. You never know, but I think that would be a good place to go. Is there anybody from his past that we could also mention? Of? I don't know, maybe. But nevertheless, I mean, who else do we have right now that could really match the level of CM Punk or the, the Roman Reigns of The Rock right now? CM Punk could very well, but again, he's hurt. And it's too bad he's not here doing anything at all, involving anything here, but because he's hurt. I mean, I think eventually Drew and Cody will be a good draw. I think there's enough heat right there to build something special. I think Cody absolutely does have that extra special spot. But they have decided to include Seth in the mix. And we know there's a little bit of shadiness with Seth Rollins about why he's, you know, so lockstep with Cody Rhodes. We know there's a reason why. There's obviously logic behind it, but there's still more to be said about it. But there is no one right now. Honestly, that comes close to where The Rock is right now in the promo ability. Like, he's hitting home runs right now. This, again, was a home run. This was incredible work. So I'm going to play the start of The Rock as he's already in the ring. And the whole stipulation to it. We're going to run through the whole thing real quick. Or as much as we want right here. We might cut a little bit in between, but we have to go back and hear the Rocks promo again and just get a little bit of a breakdown and analyze what it is that we're not going to get from these other two superstars right now that Triple H is trying to push. Okay, what? We get, we're getting Final Testament against the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley? I mean, I haven't really paid attention to TV too much. Really not much. But yeah, I know we're getting that match. Am I going to really care about that? Is that really getting a whole lot of heat? Maybe for the base, but is the mainstream crowd really caring? No, no, not at all. It's a dwindling, 
base audience. Let's just remember that. The Rock and Roman Reigns are pulling in mainstream viewers. And viewers that used to watch the shows regularly during the Attitude Era or wherever else. Okay? Because we appreciate good wrestling. We appreciate great promos. Here's The Rock. By the way, something to be said about an older rock being in this ring and what he's been able to do. He's an old, but he's good. Are you sure you want to boo the rock? Palm of his hands. Before The Rock drops gospel on you, he's got some good news to share. The Rock has got some news that you're probably going to like. The Rock has got some news that you might even be proud of. Apparently, Glendale is 10 miles away from Phoenix. Assuming the answer is yes, but... Are there a lot of people from Phoenix here tonight? I knew it, because that would make sense. The Rock did a little research, and here's what he found out. This is the truth. This is a fact. The number one city in America for cocaine and meth use is Phoenix, Arizona. You want to really just pull things off like that. Let me tell you. It's just enjoyable here. L.A. Knight. I'm sorry. Even if you took the muzzle off of him and let him say whatever he wants, he would not come up with this. He could not come up with promos like this. Now, forget about this part. We're talking about more. And here's what that means. Finally. Your life has meaning. Because finally, you cactus-loving crackheads finally have something worth shooting in your veins. As you sit and you look at greatness, finally, The Rock has come back to Arizona. He has the ego of an 80s Ric Flair on World Championship Wrestling at, at, at seriously, at like 755 Eastern. Hey, what are you now, for? even when The Rock, okay, I'll put it like this. And LA Knight's what a great example because people want to go ahead and see LA Knight be what The Rock is right now. They want to see the level of promos that The Rock is in right now from LA Knight. They want that. They're not going to get it. Do you understand? The most important thing also, they don't ever put him as a heel. LA Knight never gets put into a serious feud where he could do more of that. He's been put as a face because the crowd turned him over. But he's better off as a heel. I also notice so many, so many signs in the crowd. Glendale, can you feel it? You feel it in the air because it's real. The Rock's body is covered in chills. The Rock is in a good mood. They're in a good mood. The wise man is in a good mood. The universal champion is in a good mood. Jimmy's in a good mood. Solo's in a good mood. You wouldn't know it by looking at him, but that's his happy face. He's in a good mood. And here's why we're in a good mood, Glendale, Arizona, because once again, and it's been decades, professional wrestling is cool. So many crowds. Listen. Professional if, wrestling is exciting. Pro- by the way, I got to say this. If you showed me that crowd, now, of course, the production value is much different. We're in HD much more than ever. But if you showed me what the crowd looked like and you don't show me who's in the ring, okay, 
and you don't tell me what year it is. I'm looking at the amount of signs that are out there right now. And there is as many signs as there used to be back in the day. By the way, I do like the fact that with the production changes, you see the crowd now and you see all those damn signs and everybody's out there involved and the crowd is just electric the whole time. Back to the rock. Professional wrestling is in a word electrifying once again. It's why in Birmingham, Alabama, sold out. It's why in Salt Lake City, sold out. It's why tonight in this crack den with popcorn, we are sold out. And it used to be like that in the Attitude Era. It's why next week in Dallas, Texas, sell out. Two weeks from now in Memphis, Tennessee, when The Rock comes home, baby, that's going to sell out too. And here's why. Because it is greatness among you. Wrestling is cool again because of The Rock, Roman Reigns, and the bloodline. And let me say this difference too. The Attitude Era, you still had direct competition from WCW, which was motivating, motivating the WWF at the time to step up their game. There's nothing of this here. AEW is a non-factor, okay? They are a solid number two promotion. But they're not even coming close in the competition of creating some headway because AEW is in their own lane. They're really not messing with WWE. They might be getting some more pay-per-views. They got some good coverage in terms of broadcasting where they have their shows on. But they're not anywhere near the, the, the heights of of WWE and that's fine and I like the fact that we're not worrying about this because you know what Tony Khan is not Eric Bischoff Eric Bischoff wanted to take out Vince McMahon not only take down WWF he wanted to bury it he wanted the WWF to be dead he wasn't content with just beating them he wanted to destroy them so that level of momentum created the A game that we had in the Attitude Era and the excitement and the energy that we had in the late 90s that we all talk about the Monday Night Wars. There's no wars right now. No head-to-head competition. Nothing. We're, I'm sure people in WWE don't even talk about what's going on in AEW and the fact that some of the other stars that came from their company is over there and they're just doing what they want. Okay? WWE is on their own right here. They're on their own rocket ship. They're unopposed. And you're getting this level from the Rock and Roman Reigns. The locker room probably hates the fact that all this time, we're getting, what was it, like 42 minutes of SmackDown airtime went to the Rock and Roman Reigns? Yeah. What else are you going to do right now, the rest of that roster, that's going to basically, you know, match the level of excitement, of energy, Who did the people come to see? They came to see these guys right here. And by the way, this is no NWO. All right. This is not an aging Hulk Hogan and Hall and Nash that have been thrown down our throats. No, we got Jimmy Uso out there. We got Sol Sokoa very much still in the very much in the prime of career. Roman Reigns in the prime of his career. Okay. You might not like the fact that he doesn't wrestle all the time, but Hey, that's there goes the breaks. Paul Heyman out there, and then The Rock, who he's just come back and is just tearing it up. Now he's going to get to Cody and Seth. And like I said, I believe Cody and Seth had the chance to go ahead and really give a proper pushback on The Rock and Roman Reigns. But look at what The Rock says here. I'm sure not scripted. He only had talking points. And listen to what he says. Cody getting the, the chance here is great. And that's exactly what you want here for. But you know who's not cool? is your hero, Cody Rhodes. 
Now we're in the part two. Cody, you think you're tough, boy? You want to run your mouth? You want to challenge the rock? You want to go one on one with the great one? See how tough you are, boy? Is that it? Well, the rock sees you, he hears you. And right here, live in Glendale, here's the rock's answer on SmackDown one on one with the great one. And the rock says, no. I love that he doesn't go the full rock like persona we've heard. Southern. It's so much different now. I love the fact that he is more reserved, so serious, and so simple about it. It's wonderful. You think you're just going to go one-on-one with the great one just because you want to? That's not how it happens. That ain't the real world, Glendale. You know that, and The Rock knows that. But guess what, Cody? The world wants to go one-on-one with The Rock. Everyone wants to go one-on-one. And you know who else wants to go one-on-one with The Rock? Every woman in this arena. (laughs) That is a Ric Flair line if I ever heard one. And the smile. Fantastic. I tell you what. That's pretty uh, controversial now for these days to go say that. Just saying. Now you settle down, you cack, you crackhead Karens. You methhead Marys. Because The Rock will tell you this right now. There ain't no way that you are ready for The Rock's 22 inches of heaven, baby. <laughs> Once again, innuendo. But we don't get this anymore. And us old school fans, we enjoy this. The fact he's no, kind of no, giving no, us no, that. No, 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 no. Get your mind out of the gutter. The Rock ain't talking about his holy Moses. No, no, no. The Rock is talking about the 22-inch guns that are hanging from his shoulders that he'll wrap around Cody Rhodes, but it ain't going to be one-on-one, no. Cody Rhodes, you think you're tough? You think you could go one-on-one with The Rock? Are you an idiot? Are you an idiot right now? You got the biggest WrestleMania match of your career against the most dominant WWE champion in history of the WWE, and you're challenging The Rock? Perfect mention of Roman well, the Reigns. Rock, Roman Reigns in the bloodline. We saw your challenge. We heard your challenge. We had a laugh about your challenge. But now, The Rock is a businessman. We are businessmen. We have a counter offer for you. So good they're doing on this. You understand this? So well performed. And Roman Reigns getting the mention exactly right. Well said. Here's the counter offer. Shut your mouth and listen to the counter offer. Here's the counter offer. Cody, you think you're tough? You and your new best friend, that walking clown emoji, Seth Rollins. That walking clown show, Seth Rollins. You think you're tough? Well, how about this? Here's the challenge. On night one of WrestleMania, the biggest tag team match in the history of the WWE. You know this is going on the promos. Tag team match in the history of professional wrestling. It's going to be Cody, Seth against a universal champion and the people's champion, The Rock. You know that's going to set up for the the post-production already. Perfectly, perfectly said. But it ain't just going to be a regular tag match if you accept. Because The Rock and Roman, we could easily just beat the piss out of you. But here's what we want to do. We're going to give you a shot. If... You two jabronis beat The Rock and Roman Reigns on night one. Then on night two at WrestleMania, your championship match, Cody Rhodes, will be free of the bloodline. No Jimmy, no Solo, no Wise Man, and no Rock. We're gone, barred from WrestleMania. We'll get the lawyers, we'll sign a contract. You have The Rock's word, you have Roman's word. If you beat us on night one, then Cody Rhodes, you got a shot to finish your story one on one with Roman Reigns. And the best part is, is of course, the stipulation needs to be the other stipulation or the other way around, which we get. Because remember how much we used to complain about stipulations only being one sided? No, we got a two sided stipulation. All right. A well done two sided stipulation, I might add. Just let's make that point across here. By the way, 
this has gotten again two and a half million views so far on the WWE YouTube account at this point. That's the big deal. But there's always a but. If, not if, but when the Rock and Roman Reigns beat your two candy asses on night one, then on night two for your championship match, Cody Rhodes, it's bloodline rules. Anything goes. The Rock might just pull up a chair next to his boy Pat McAfee, call the match. Maybe Jimmy is the referee. Maybe the wise man takes out a foreign object. Maybe Solo wants to sing the national anthem. It's bloodline rules. Or, or, or. (laughs) Or, I know the thought of Solo singing the national anthem is very funny. He's got a hell of a voice. But let The Rock finish, so sit there and shut your mouth. And the solo is going to be so over. Bloodline rules. The Rock will take that chair he's sitting on. Solo's going to be so over when he breaks off of the bloodline. That's going to be one of the ultimate things that happens in the bloodline. He is going to be so over. I hope he's learning and he's adding more dimensions to his persona. He really does. Or bloodline rules. The Rock will take his chair he's sitting in. And he'll find his way over to you, Cody, and he'll just bash your brains in. And it will be legal. So you got a lot to think about, boy. You and your walking clown show, Seth Rollins. You think you're tough? You think you're tough? You think you could go two on two with the greatest pairing in the history of sports and entertainment? Is that what you think? You got a lot to think about. You meet us next week in Dallas face to face and you give us your answer. Because here's the thing. You listen to this, Cody Rhodes, and you too, you walk in emoji clown show of Seth Rollins. Here's the thing. If you don't accept this challenge and we're giving you an option, if you don't accept it, then you know and they know and the world knows that The Rock will do everything in his power to make sure you don't win that title. And let me tell you something else, punk. There ain't a man back there that could stop The Rock from making that happen. You know where The Rock sits. You know The Rock sits at the board. You know The Rock owns it all, which means The Rock is your boss. And there ain't a man back there that could stop The Rock. It ain't no general manager. It ain't no vice president of who gives a Triple H. It doesn't matter. So good. And here's the thing, Cody Rhodes. If you don't accept this challenge, here's the thing. All right, you guys want to do? I'd be curious if if Triple H is even brought into the storyline at all. I don't know if they'll actually do that, but they could very well. But I'm telling you, man, like I just hear, you can't do much better. Again, there was no, and nobody could come out to the ring and go one on one on the mic with the Rock like he did tonight, like he did on that promo. Like the Rock was saying, if you don't accept this challenge, then the Rock and Roman Reigns will end your story tragically so how tough do you think you are punks you meet us next week in dallas texas you meet us on smackdown and you give us your answers now of course he does the part where he tries to do the if you smell but he stopped which is a typical like okay suspense because roman stopped the rock from doing his catchphrase and this is where Roman Reigns has to get his comeuppance here. It's only right. In the Bloodline storyline, Roman is the boss. Rock says he's the boss, but look what he just did right there. Rock, Rock, it's asserting authority. This was the perfect touch. By the way, it didn't take much time to do it. Didn't take much time. But Roman taking the mic and putting the Rock in his place was the best part of this whole thing. Let's play it.
I need something from you. I'll do anything for my family. But I need this one thing. The stare. A deep stare. And then he says it. Wow. Acknowledge me. Man, that that just gave me goosebumps when I heard it the first time. It's still like, what a shock. Good dramatic soap opera kind of shit. This is the stuff that we had with Sami Zayn before and how emotional the bloodline was. This was emotion. This was the best part of the bloodline from last year. We get it again in this moment. And The Rock has to think about it. And the, the cold stare on both of them. And The Rock taking out the sunglasses. A serious, serious stare. Good stuff. And The Rock is in his mind. And they're looking at him and he's like... There's where the acting chops come in. Roman's emotions. No emotion. Roman Reigns my family I acknowledge you this is why I stopped shopping on Amazon damn you you effing uh, ads on here on YouTube as my tribal chief And that's the icing right there. And of course the hug. Let me tell you. That's drama. That's good good storyline telling right there. Amazing storytelling right there. Amazing storytelling. Now let's go and look at what Cody Rhodes and Seth did in their portion. Now Cody starts off. Mr. Nightmare. What are you thinking, my man? Obviously, you have offered to have my back against the bloodline. You've stood next to me when I got slapped across the face. Even with a bad knee, you were there then. You keep saying you're going to be there as we move forward. The plot has been incredibly twisted here. I didn't even think I would be on WrestleMania. Wasn't until I saw that stupid PowerPoint presentation about how Rock and Roman's family was better than all of ours that I decided I have to make a change. I have to go back on my word. It was my right. I won the Royal Rumble. I get to challenge Roman Reigns. You, you, coming off of injury, you have to face the only other guy who has pinned me in this ring besides Roman, Drew McIntyre. So, what I am saying and what I wanted to say here and in person for all the world to see, Rock and Roman Reigns together, two Mount Mount Rushmore wrestlers together i want to point out the difference now on the video here san antonio texas versus glendale arizona a lot less signs again monday night raw same production changes you see the crowd well lit and there are very few signs in that crowd the crowd when rock and roman reigns were out there on their feet do you understand on their feet standing This crowd on their hands, sitting on their hands, no signs, and they're a bit tame, a bit quiet, a bigger difference than what we got from The Rock speaking to that crowd in Glendale. I fully understand if you want to focus on Drew and you are not on board with having my back. And Cody makes a good point because really Seth shouldn't be a part of this, but 
We know there's something here. Well, I respect you giving me the out. I'll take care of Drew McIntyre, all right? I told Drew last week, I told you, I told the entire world, there are some things bigger than us, and taking down the bloodline is the biggest thing that we can do. Because because it's not just your story that needs to be finished at WrestleMania, Cody. It's my story, too. Ten years ago, Roman Reigns and I, we came into here together. We wanted to take the power from the top. I wanted to take the power and give it back to the people. Roman Reigns wants to keep all the power for himself. So we finally get the acknowledgement of the Here's shield. The problem. Which should have Here's been done the earlier. Problem. We're this close because with the rock in the bloodline, we are this close to Roman Reigns having absolute power. And The Rock, man, I don't know about you guys, I think I know how you feel about The Rock, but I'm kind of over The Rock, San Antonio. Now this is where things go bad. The creative decided to give this name. It did not work. And we're back. With Mark it did not work well for this at all. But anyways, let's get to the actual part where he goes ahead and says it. I think I'm going to call The Rock. Mm. He says, I'm going to think I'm going to call The Rock. Who gave him this idea? It's a mistake. How about Diarrhea Dwayne? That Diarrhea Dwayne, he's been running his mouth, and every single thing that comes out of his mouth has the consistency of wet baby poop. This is a Vince thing. And maybe Triple H probably did like this kind of fecal humor, but it doesn't The Rock pin gets here. on Instagram now. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no. They try. Oh, this is, they're, they're, they're seals. Clapping seals out here to try to get it over, but it's not going to. I was listening before where, you know, when... The Rock says for CM Punk, for as long as people are going to remember you, they're going to remember you as Cookie Puss. That didn't work either. Okay? You just can't force that line down them and make it work. All right? Cody Crybaby's worked. And the crowd has been eating it up. And they're all putting signs out about there. Okay? It just doesn't do the same thing. Moving along. His fingers, because he's my boss. He can make it go away. Well, Rock, I dare you to try. And get this, guys. I don't know if you heard him because 20 minutes is a long time to listen to that idiot. But he said he made professional wrestling cool again. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Rock. The Rock, our savior, guys. He saved us. He made it cool. Diarrhea Dwayne, I don't know if you know this or not, but you ain't been cool in 20 years, pal. <laughs> the temperature in that room, it's just but not I'll the same. You what is cool. People are into it, but it's nothing like it was. This morning. Think about it like this. If you saw Cody and Seth come out after that, do you think that this right here, like say the next hour, the nine o'clock hour, we see Cody and Seth, or Cody and Seth wrap, wrap up the night, which, you know what? They might have gotten some ratings better than what they got in the main event on Friday night. Imagine if Cody and Seth went out there and they had to go and follow what the Rock and Roman Reigns did. They couldn't. This would have never gone over. And honestly, the reason why the ratings went like they did is because nothing else would have been better than what the Rock and Roman Reigns did. 
in that early segment on SmackDown. There's just nothing that they could do. No, po- no way possible. It wasn't going to happen. But that's what we also need to go and have. <clears throat> we can't have the, we can't have the response to this match happen on Raw. We had to push it to SmackDown. It's the only way it's going to work. So they decided to go that route, and justifiably so. They had to do that. So I have made my argument. I'm going to leave it right there with that. But I got a few more things to go and bring up before we wrap things up. If you remember. I did say that I, well, if you might remember Sunday night, there was AW revolution stings retirement. I did a post show. You can find it right now. King of podcasts.com. I did that up there and it was great. Listen, great show all together. I'll make that point. But I guess if you want to go and catch more about it, you can catch that right there. Some new information about the fact that while WWE made a net deal with Netflix to get their show Monday Night Raw, moved to the streaming service in January of 25. So this January, some new information was being said. <clears throat> so as we said, the Raw deal is for 10 years, more than $5 billion, $500 million a year. And the USA Network will be running Raw on USA Network through September 2024. But we don't know where they're going to be running for the final three months of the year. Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics provided notes about the talk from TKO COO Mark Shapiro at the Morgan Stanley conference. Mark Shapiro. And Mark Shapiro noted that WWE originally had talks with Netflix about airing NXT prior to talks about moving Raw to the streaming service. And that once the Raw talks came into play, that's when the global rights conversation began. And Nick Khan and TKO CFO Andrew Schleimer negotiated the deal. So that's something new that we also learned about all together, which was actually quite interesting. So one of the big things that happened over on AEW tonight is <clears throat> we got the appearance by the Rainmaker, Kazuka Okada. He has joined AEW. That is now in play. It's happened. He's in. So here's what we had from AEW tonight. We've got two items to discuss two huge announcements first of all the first item is a little bit of housekeeping um and this this is really tough actually now that i'm thinking about it now that we're out here uh because it, it pertains to two of our, our our dear friends but 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 we are evps damn it and we take these jobs serious and we got to make the the tough decisions so in an effort to show no favoritism, no bias in the back of that locker room. Our hands are forced here. Hangman Adam Page, you put your hands on two AEW officials at the pay-per-view on Sunday, and you cross the line. God, this, I don't, do I gotta say it? So unfortunately, Hanger, we have to suspend you indefinitely from the elite without pay. The elite got paid. And then, the, then there's the next one. I, I don't even know how I'm going to say this one. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can do it. Okay. 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 Kenny Omega. Our dear friend. Kenny, it's like you disappeared off of the face of the earth or something you you haven't made any of your dates for no good reason to i no I, good just, I, I, I can't figure it out Not with illness the hell what's wrong with so, these guys as far as your association goes with the elite ken you're fired what? oh man that's massive i mean i, I agree with the hangman out of pain listen decision, we're but- sorry we love you guys and I, and I also apologize if you had to find that out on, on live television, because I, actually I know that you did. Um, but listen, light up the group chat. We, we'll, we're free all, all, all weekend, I think. So by the way, here is the clip of Okada as he makes his surprise debut in AEW.
And to think WWE was trying to get him. Aggressively try to get him. The Rainmaker! Kazuchika Okada! There you go. Done. Set up. Some big news happening this week. And some really good storylines. So like, obviously the Elite are going to do something more in their storylines. What they're going to be setting up. That's good. So we got that going for us. Their storylines are trying to build up. Well, they're trying to do what they can right now over in AEW with Samoa Jones for Strickland and the Undisputed Kingdom. There's a lot going on right there, but nothing close to the level of the Rock and Roman Reigns, and that's okay. But with WrestleMania, my message is to the rest of that locker room. You know, for everybody else out there that wants to go ahead and praise so much of what this product is going to be on a regular basis, because the WrestleMania offseason is going to be coming. Without Rock and Roman Reigns, which will probably be taking both time off after this, what are you going to do? I'm not going to be the Hulkster here, but listen, what is WWE going to do to keep up the momentum going into Paris, Munich, Saudi Arabia again, and, you know, head into SummerSlam, head into Survivor Series, everything else that's going on. Like, what are they going to do to build up for all that? And then the next return of Monday Night Football, and the return of other things that are going to be going on. And also for the debut for Raw going over to Netflix. A lot of things have to happen. Very interesting. The answer is not in the youth. It's not in Braun Breaker. You want to run him like a, like either Ryback, you know, or uh, I don't know. You want to put him out there and do the, the squash matches all, you know, a plenty? Sure. You can see that works. You know, make him go Goldberg, more Goldberg than Ryback. Let's hope for that. We can see that. But then what else you got? I mean, Jake Cargill, they still haven't decided to pull the trigger on her yet and pull her out there. They've had her up here, but really they haven't done much with her. What are they waiting for? I mean, she's been sitting back there for a while. And, you know, we don't hear a lot about her and any training or what they're doing right here with her right now, they're just kind of like, okay, what's happening here? You keep showing her. Why do you keep showing her? Is she going to be doing something? I think there's a lot of hesitation as to how they're going to book Jake Cargill to make sure he comes, she comes out of it. Okay. In the meantime, you know, I mean, what we'll to figure it all out? Let's see what comes up. Is there anything else I haven't caught up on yet? No, we talked about Paul Heyman that's going to be joining the Hall of Fame. We'll talk about that probably coming up. We'll see what goes on with that. <clears throat> we can also probably talk about the fact that Matt Hardy, his, his uh, deal right now is about to expire soon. And who knows what he's going to be doing next. But we'll figure that out soon enough. And we'll find that all of this pretty much soon. So we'll go and see what they're going to do. All right, that's the show for the night. Thanks for listening in. Fun of the show as you always do. Appreciate all of you catching the program as you as you always do. And of course, the website is kingofpodcasts.com. Four weeks out from WrestleMania. We're waiting on it. Let's see what they're going to do. How about some other storylines that are going to match the level or could try to come close, even come a little bit to a spidgen to the level of Rock and Roman Reigns? I'd like to see them try to do that. They might not do it right now, but that's what they need to be considering going forward. I'm King of Podcasts. Come back next week for another Wrestling Israel Podcast because wrestling needs us.